Hi everybody, this is the video tutorial for another point in a titration curve. So once again we've got our nitrous acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. We've established that it's not a buffer. So just as a matter of course, we're going to do the major species. It's not necessary for you to do that every time. I'm sure you'll come to a point where you can think this through without going through it. But it's just a good matter of course to get into. So we have our weak acid, which stays together. We've got our strong base that breaks up, and we've got water. As always, you're going to look for the strong substance. In this case, it is still hydroxide. And it's going to have priority, and it's going to react with the best acid in solution. Okay. So now we have the first step, the hydroxide plus your nitrous acid completely reacts to form H2O and nitrate. Once again, completion means stoichiometry. Stoichiometry means moles. So we have our initial moles there, we have our change, and we have our final conditions. We're going to use these pieces of information here to determine how many moles we have. So for nitrous acid, 2 times 0.5, we still have our 1 mole. And then here, 4 times 0.75 would give us 3 moles. We don't care about water, none of that initially. So now in this case, this is no longer our limiting reactant. It's now our weak acid that's limiting. This means we've gone beyond the equivalence point, which can become important later. So because this is limiting, we're going to use this all up, use the same amount of this, and create the same amount of that. So after the first reaction takes place, you have two moles of hydroxide left, you have no nitrous acid, and you have one mole of NO2. So that means in solution remaining, the two things are hydroxide and NO2 minus. Those two do not react with one another. They are both bases. There would be nothing to draw them to each other. Nitrous acid is able to react with the water in solution, and it would form some amount of hydroxide and some HNO2. So now we have to consider, does this equilibrium reaction actually something that we should be concerned about? The amount of hydroxide the nitrate will produce is so small compared to the hydroxide that's already in solution that we don't actually care about this reaction. Pretend that this is a million dollars and this is one dollar. You don't need to say you have a million and one dollars, meaning we can get rid of this. So once you've gone post-equivalence, the only thing that affects the pH is the strong substance. So only strong acid or base, depending on what kind of titration you're doing, affects pH. So that means what I need to do then is take this value here, convert it to molarity, get my pOH, and from my pOH get my pH. So I'm going to divide that by the total volume, which is 1.25, and that is a concentration of 1.6 molar. So my pH is equal to 14 minus the negative log of 1.6, which gives me a value of 14.20. And that is how you handle a titration when you've gone post-equivalence.